Hey, oh, what's up, peeps? Hope you all enjoy. If you guys don't mind hitting the thumbs up button, also leaving a comment down below our exclusive interview with the Kick CEO and also Kick staff on Nick Merck's Ice Poseidon, T Food, Dr. Disrespect, Gambling, Torture Streams, IRL Streams, Drama, and much, much more. I'm going to try my best to timestamp this down below for all of you. It's a great discussion. We hope you all enjoy, and we'll see you back here for the next one. All right, guys, take care. Enjoy the watch. Another big gaming signing, one of the top uh, Twitch sub streamers. That being Nick Merckx has now officially joined Kick. Was going to ask you guys, you know, how did you come to the decision to to sign a guy like Nick Merckx? Couldn't have been a, a short talk, I'm assuming, but how do you come to sign someone like Nick Merckx? Um, yeah. So the discussions around all these large signings, you know, we you see you see someone move over, right? But there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of discussion in the background, right? It's not a small, um, you know, it's not a small thing to move platforms. It's a, it's a tall ask to get someone to say, hey, look, you know, take a platform that you've called home for, whether it's five, six, seven years or whatever it is, and, and come to this brand new project and and put all your faith in us, right? It's, it's a, it's a two-way street. You know, we've got to build a relationship with them and they've got to build a relationship with us. But you know, with that said, we're we're looking to work with with pretty much anyone who has an established audience, right? Anyone who has an established audience, we really want to work with them. We want to make sure we look out for them. Like I was talking about before, you know, platform deals are are drying up. You know, other platforms aren't actually offering any deals to people. And I made that kind of you know sort of a connection between sort of a a, a TV station no longer paying their content. Um, anymore and, and how that doesn't work so you know we're, we're open to having these discussions with everyone but in particular there are certain people we really want and they're the people we actively pursue and you know nick Merckx is, is definitely one of them and the reason you know behind that there, there's more than just ccv right like when you when you look at channels the immediate thing people look at is is like how many viewers does someone have but you know, way we look at it is is that's just one sort of facet in trying to understand like who would make a great addition to the platform um and you know nick stood out for many reasons outside of the fact that he does have a, a large large audience he has a very dedicated obviously a very loyal following you know that's obviously you know visible through simply like he said his sub count um you know the fact that he was organizing these huge events that attracted you know record-breaking sort of crowds you know nick has a lot of um, aspects to to what he does that sets him aside from other creators i think he's um you know he's extremely talented and he's he's really a pillar of the whole um you know first person shooter sort of esports sort of um sort of scene in that sense and he's really going to help us expand into these new um new genres you know we, we discussed a little bit about how irl streaming is doing quite well on kick but but gaming is the all behind you know streaming platforms so you know we're hoping nick is is one of the you know uh, first of, of many big name gamers to to make that switch over and yeah the discussions behind it they're they're lengthy they're long but they're definitely worth it in the end and it's really cool when you see people like nick using kick enjoying kick and seeing success on kick and i think that's um you know ties back to, to why we kind of work choose to work with people some people they've, they've got audiences that just follow them anywhere uh some people not as much so um and we're learning that very quickly i think uh Nick has proven to be one of those people with uh, with a very very active and loyal loyal following. Yeah, Hunter Hunter was on this one months and months and months ago. Got to give Nick his flowers though. Ever since Mixer kind of came about, I think a lot of people have been trying to decide, okay, what streamers can actually have people follow them to it to a platform switch. And I think when you spend the time like Nick has to build up that community, you know, labeling him as the M fam, hosting events for the M fam, he even him changing from game to game to game, proving that his audience does follow with. Uh, me and Hunter talked about this. It kind of just proved himself as if you are a new platform, you want those kind of people that have those audiences, not just viewership wise, but like you said, dedication wise. Um, you also said it was a lengthy process though. Throughout that process, you know, if you guys see a, a big streamer you want, or if a big streamer is looking at kick in this case in particular, did you guys reach out to Nick first or was Nick coming to you guys, uh, with a bit of curiosity? Um, yeah, in terms of Nick, I I think that yeah, you know, just due to the fact that that Nick gets along and knows so many people who are involved with Kick already, I think those conversations were always kind of loosely open. Um, I don't think there was ever you know who came to who sort of thing. I think he knew, of course, we were <laughs> always very happy to have him. And and you know when he when he made that call and, and said, hey, look, I want to do this, you know, we we're we we're ready to start the conversation. Um, you know, I think um. 
I, I think it was always a two-way street. Obviously, I think, yeah, Nick is gets along very well with some of the, the first people that, that moved to the, the platform, and that was, uh, you know, that left the door open from, from the very get-go. Um, yeah, you know, I like to think that, like I said to, to at the beginning, really, it's, um, you know, we're open to working with pretty much anyone. It's It's just about, you know, having that discussion and making it work. And we really want to make sure we do support those people who who might not feel like they're, they're receiving that support elsewhere. You know, you might have I up in Jake. Can I get one more Hunter? One more. Yeah. Cool. Eddie, you know, I gotta, I gotta shoot my shot with you. Last time we talked uh, about the XQC supposed hundred million dollar deal this time reported for Nick Merck's a uh, $10 million deal. Can you, can you speak to those numbers at all? Um, I, I definitely can't sit here and confirm numbers and stuff. I, I think, you know, when, when it comes to a lot of headlines and stuff, um, you, you have to take with a grain of salt um, that there are, there are a lot of headlines out there, which make no sense at all. I think you'll see Twitter come up with like people saying like $60 million here, $80 million here. Um, you know, I think Nick's got a, a kick deal and he does have a separate stake deal as well. I think there's some confusion between that, um, you know, that, that we, we have kind of addressed a little bit. Um, but yeah, there, there's big numbers involved. You know, when you have a following like Nick, when you have that level of um, influence, when you have spent that much time building such a well-known uh, brand, then then naturally big numbers are involved. Um, you know, I can't confirm anything right here, but but it 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 wasn't cheap, and and that's what he deserves. That's what big streamers deserve. Uh, that I, I feel very strongly about that. I was hoping Eddie was just gonna be like, Nick's happy, you know? <laughs> um, I, I think Nick's happy. You know, Nick's also, definitely happy, right? Yeah, but with big big streamers like him come big moments, guys, right? So like when that Fortnite OG map launched, how great was it to see Doc and Tim and and mm -hmm. and Nick, like all in the same all in the same stream? So, you know, those moments come it, you know, I hear that a lot. Like you know, Kick feels like Justin TV before it was purchased by, by Amazon. Like Nick brings that nostalgia back, right? Nick has all those connections with people who that business muddied the water and, and, and kick has kind of been able to, to, to bring some of that, that good feeling that, that, that nostalgia back. So uh, Nick uh, with that contract, all those other moments uh, come with that. And, and, and that's, that's a, that's a massive component that I think gets overlooked. We talk about the money, but talk about the gaming moments. We need to talk about, um, how Nick is going to evolve his brand uh, to his community. Yeah, I think that is cool. I actually didn't think about that. Uh, the fact that if just how timely it was with, with OG Fortnite and uh, the return of that, that we would not have seen Nick and Doc together uh, if it wasn't for that platform switch. So that is also a great point. Um, Eddie, I wanted to talk about what you actually just brought up too. Um, just to get clarification on, obviously, uh, Jake and I both got caught out for this and roasted for the confusion uh, a little bit. But when it comes to those, uh, you know, kick versus state contracts, how are those functioning? I feel like a lot of, you know, like a lot of chatter in the space, people always talk. Uh, a lot of the chatter is like, oh, are these guys, you know, making them take state contracts at the same time? Like, are they pushing them on them because like they want to bring them over and then get their audiences on stake? How are those conversations going? Obviously, you can't reveal like details of like so and so asked for this or or whatever. But what are those conversations like? Like, is there a push for people to take state contracts, or is it pretty much you know open in the air for people and like separate conversations? Yeah to to answer to answer the question that yeah every contract we do. Um, you know, they're, they're completely separate. They're two different companies with two different goals, with two different metrics of success, with completely different payment structures. Um, but, you know, on the stake side, right, before before Kick existed, I think stake would have probably been the largest contributor to, to streaming sponsorships throughout 2020, 2021, and 2022. Um, stake invested a lot of money and worked with pretty much you know, we, we were speaking to every creator um, on the stake side about about um, streaming integrations and a lot of creators took stake deal deals. Um, you know, obviously over on, on other platforms now, stake deals are, are less common, but when you come to kick, they're now on the table again. So naturally those same people who were discussing with us previously, they go, hold on a second. You know, I 
you know, is this a possibility? And of course, it becomes a possibility. And if you're talking with the team at Kick, uh, it's no secret. Then it's very easy to get a conversation started with the guys at stake. So, um, you know, it's 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 something that is obviously on the table. I think there's a lot of um, you know pros and cons to switching platforms. You know, one of the pros I like to think is that you get the opportunity to work alongside a company which invested more into live streaming than than kind of any company previously. So it obviously is a uh, a big facet of of the the deals and and what what happens here on kick but by all means no one is ever forced into taking a state contract ever <laughs> that would never ever happen our discussions are 100 percent are based around kick and then if someone wants to move over the kick and if they want to take a stake deal then of course when we're, we're not gonna you know say no right so um yeah those, those deals will always remain separate and i think that's extremely important to to separate and you know i can i can't uh emphasize highly that that you know that's never going to be the situation and something that we're going to stay true to in terms of how we operate as a platform well when it comes to the betting side we've seen a lot of these bigger streamers have sports betting or uh, other betting opportunities come their way and they've already taken them uh, i think nick Merckx, uh might still be with someone like underdog you got doc with FanDuel. tim's got his deals do those deals ever cause cause like a conflict of interest if, if a streamer were to want to come to kick but like maintain a, a different betting sponsor they previously taken? Um yes, yeah, so if, if someone wants to move over the kick but has a, a betting sponsorship, then that is no conflict of interest at all uh for kick. Um if they wanted to take a stake deal and they had another gambling sponsor deal, then that definitely could become a conflict of interest. But in terms of just taking a kick deal, if you have another gambling sponsor, that's absolutely fine. Heck, you could even do gambling streams if you wanted to. If you um, you know, you go to the slots and casino section here on Kick, you'll see that to be honest, more than fifty percent of the websites are actually probably not even staked. There, there are a whole bunch of other ones that, that I don't even know of. So um, you know, at that point, maybe not for over fifty percent. Don't don't quote me on that, but there's definitely a lot of other sites out there. Um, you know, even obviously, obviously, boy, you, you guys, you guys work alongside Thunderpick, right? So, you know, there's nothing wrong with that at all. We're cool with that. We're fine with that. I'm, I'm here to even say Thunderpick's a good website. I like it. <laughs> you know, I've been a big fan of theirs for a while. So we've got no problem at all with competing gambling websites um, when it comes to Kick as a platform. Um, but you know, if someone wants to take a stake deal, that that's obviously another question. So um, we, we, we stake obviously requires exclusivity in that category. And um, that that's how those deals are structured. So that's the only reason you'd ever see some kind of conflict arising from that. Okay. Uh, and just one more on the gambling side of things. And then we have some, uh, you know, some less, uh, you know, gambling pressed <laughs> questions. Uh, obviously with people like XGC, people like Nate Merckx, uh, who are coming and end up having stake deals as well. Um, the biggest criticism I feel like we hear still of Kick is when they start, bringing gambling streams in um, saying, you know, well, these guys have young viewers. They're probably influencing them or even adult viewers like gambling is is a bad thing. So obviously, uh, with your position uh, in the company's, you know, association with stake, what do you guys like? What is your view on that? Do you think that it is as much of a danger as people are saying it is? Um, obviously, gambling is is super serious, right? But at the same time, it, Basically, just asking, what is your view on that? Because obviously, there's it's okay in moderation, but we would love to hear you guys speak to it. Yeah, no, no, definitely. I think it's it's a really, really valid concern, and I think um, you know when it comes to to advertising of any product, any substance of of addictive nature, it's it's important to keep this kind of stuff in mind, right? Gambling is addictive. And and therefore the way it's advertised is is something that will always be brought up in elements of controversy, right? There there's no no hiding that fact. Um, you know, I think when we start looking at that problem, whilst you know live streaming and and how that is playing a part in in the in the broader advertising of gambling, you know, I think I I think that you have to kind of zoom out for a second and understand what's what's happening sort of nowadays like you turn on the tv right the gambling's becoming much more normalized right there's gambling ads everywhere i think if we have to look at live streaming as being the one place to protect people from say being influenced by gambling i think that's 
something which which isn't gonna solve the broader problem right it doesn't matter whether you're on reddit whether you're on youtube whether you're on even twitch you're gonna get gambling ads thrown at you constantly you're also gonna have call to actions thrown at you you're gonna get 200 percent welcome bonuses deposit matches free bets whatever it may be all advertised to you you know the difference is i think with live streaming obviously it's still gambling advertising there's no doubt about that but you know we do offer people the the, the ability to to really sort of not have to push the product at the same level. Um, you know, you mentioned like the XQC, right? I remember my conversation with XQC when we first discussed gambling. I was like, yo, dude, let's, um, you know, I, I need you to push an affiliate link. And he said, no, I'm not touching affiliate links. I'm not pushing anyone to any links. I'm not advertising. I just want to play the website and that's it. And I was like, dude, that's cool. No problem at all. And, you know, subsequently he's given it a lot of brand exposure. There's no doubt about that. There's a lot of advertisement value in that. But I think you do see a much more real sort of experience, right? Obviously you see someone win a lot of money and get very happy and that obviously entices people to play, but you also see them lose a lot of money. There's no bullshit. It's straight to the point. People tell them exactly what's going on. They're not forced to say anything. You know, no state contract will ever say you need to like say a certain thing about gambling. So, you know, whilst I understand that gambling advertisement is is obviously a, a big subject that we need to be very cautious about and it needs a lot of oversight. You know, I think if we're going to look at that subject, I think we have to zoom out for a bit and understand that the world's changing. And there's probably other areas as well that need to sort of understand how we regulate or what's legal, what's illegal, what is defined as, as, as allowed because um, gambling advertisements everywhere. And I think in terms of protecting kids and protecting minors who are easily influenced, you know, I think we have to turn towards, you know, the bigger picture if we want to solve that one, because in honesty, I feel like, um, you know, there, there's, there's there's a lot of opportunities for them to to get to get hooked in. So um, it's a complicated subject, and I think I think it's definitely something we want to continue to distance ourselves from because we don't want to be known as a platform that's simply a gambling advertisement or whatever, right? We want to continue to distance ourselves from that, and it's not something we, um, you know, we want to be known as. The the Kick project is is completely separate to Stake. I told you guys this last time. You know, Kick as a project is something that's gonna hopefully eclipse what stake has become. Um, and, and we want to continue with that. We don't want to be held back through that um, being, being adjoined with it. So, you know, we are looking to sign lots of creators who aren't going to engage in the gambling side of stuff. And we're, if anything, I'll be honest with you, me personally, I'm kind of pushing for people not to take those, those stake gambling deals. Um, you know, um, there, there's a few, few big names, which I would really much prefer if they, they stopped gambling and they just did their normal content. But again, I can't get involved in the economics of their decisions they make. Um, so that's, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I, I completely understand there's valid concern for it. And I, I do think that there's room to, to continue to regulate and, um, better how gambling or is, is advertised because it's, um, it is a serious subject, uh, that there's a lot of controversy around and we have to be extremely careful with how it's done. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. And, and just to get two, two more cents in there, um, around self-regulation, I mean, what Polly did with the toggle on and toggle off of casino, um, I mean, you know, words are words that he says this all the time, right? Words are words, but actions. Uh, speak much louder. And I, I think the fact that we have uh, the ability for any user or parent uh, to come in and make sure that that casino is off, it removes casino from the entire uh, experience on kick. So um, we've had this conversation a lot. We, we will always be cognizant of it. So um, we think we did a pretty good job of not only addressing that concern, but also dipping into something else where we were kind of like, hey, um, if we can do this with casino, we can do this with other, um, you know, experiences on on kick. So that's that that just opens up a an, another door of menus that that we can um, that we can help out in other categories. And so when it comes to kick, you know, trying to eclipse other platforms, obviously that's going to take a lot of signings. It's going to take a lot of development. You guys have spoken about this at length for some time. Uh, but, but when you want to surpass your competition you're going to have to keep on signing some big streamers. I'm going to get crucified if I don't talk, ask about this. Uh, has there been any developments on Dr. Disrespect being signed to kick? Last time we talked, it was a discussion. Uh, has he moved his price point at all for you guys? Um, yeah, I think, I think those conversations with Doc uh, are still ongoing. Um, yeah, I think as we discussed a bit around Nick, they're, they're not discussions that happen overnight. It's big changes for someone with a big brand. And there's a lot of sort of aspects of it that we need to 
iron out, but I, I can I can safely say that the you know we really really want to work with Doc. We we understand the importance that that he sort of holds in the broader industry and and everything he's done for the streaming industry. So having him on board would be incredible, uh, especially alongside the likes of Nick. Um, and and maybe some other sort of people in that domain too. I think we're there, there, there's we've got our eyes on a few people in that kind of area that I think would make a, an incredible sort of team to have here at Kick representing us on the first person shooter on the sort of more esports area of 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 streaming. So um, we're working on it. We're working on it, and we we really want to we really want to pull that one off. Yeah, Eddie, we've seen a, a lot of teases out there on Kick's social media by Doctor Disrespect as well as by train about maybe uh, a new signing. I just I'm curious, like, what are you, what are your thoughts about Tifu? <laughs> um, I, I, well, Tifu was, 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 sorry, he still is absolutely massive. He's taking a break right now, but I think that's a symptom of what the live streaming industry has become. A lot of people have been demotivated and had issues with, with, with continuing to live stream due to just the direction the industry is taking. Um, you know, I think that that's where we can come in and solve a lot of problems and really work with these people to ensure they remain motivated and wanting to to be a part of of the the live streaming um, you know world again. I think some people had platform deals which really pushed them to hate live streaming. A lot of platform deals have so many clauses in them. Um, you'd you'd be amazed at what you're forced to do under a platform deal. And some of these platform deals make people burn out. It, it makes them hate live streaming. And one thing that we're finding is that we can offer platform deals with with flexibility. You know, whether that's about you know the exclusivity one we we always talk about. We don't make people stream exclusively to to kick, right? That's a big part that we think is important. But you know, also allowing people to play whatever game they want at whatever time they want. Simple stuff like that is going to help make sure that streamers actually enjoy live streaming and and a lot of love for streaming is removed from some of these huge creators when they do sign contracts with platforms that force them to do certain things and we're going to take that away and hopefully reignite that love for live streaming that they once had um but yeah tifu is you know we, i keep talking about pillars of live streaming right he's another one and he's he built up an incredible following and i think now is an amazing time to see uh, someone like him back live and um, hopefully, hopefully with us on kick, who knows? Uh, one more for me, Hunter, if you want to, if you want to bounce off this too, last time we spoke, Eddie, uh, a, a big thing you guys mentioned, you keep on mentioning pillars of gaming, wanting to diversify and branch out, sign a bunch of streamers. Last time we spoke, you mentioned 100, $1 million contracts and 1000 one hundred thousand dollar contracts can you maybe speak to like the progress you guys have had uh, on uh, issuing those out and, and signing those out um yeah so there's at this point in time i think we probably have around about 250 to 300 kind of active contracts with with different streamers right now i guess you could call them um sort of partners all those ranging from Obviously, there's XQC, right? Everyone goes back to that deal, and then there's there's ones which go down to as low as, um, say, f Andrew. Am I right in saying you know down to like five dollars an hour for some people with only a few a few viewers? Um, yeah, I mean, at the start you have you have WS Woodworking, you have Jeremy Worst. Uh, they're they're artists, but we recognize the value of those streamers. Uh, I mean, those guys are at, when they first started on Kick, they were cranking at like twenty CCD. Now it's much higher because of the exposure they've been getting, but but yeah, you're you're definitely correct. We we range from like twenty CCV to all the way up to X. Yeah, so there's there's a whole range in terms of progress on on exactly that. It's um, very much limited by capacity for how we're currently handling um, contracting. We 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 spoke about this on our first call, right? About how you know how is Kick going to be sustainable? Uh, you know, how can you offer 95% sub splits and all that kind of stuff? And I think a big part about that is keeping a lean sort of team when it comes to staffing, keeping costs under control in that department. Um, you know, we don't want to become a company that requires, say, three to 6,000 employees just to manage what we're building. So, um, you know, right now we do find ourselves, as far as contracting goes, very much bottlenecked by the administration that goes into to managing them, whether that be paying them out, uh, you know, signing legal, et cetera. So what we're trying to do right now is 
lean back onto that creator incentive program that we discussed and essentially automates a lot of the process behind that. It simply makes it no different to say getting your sub revenue every month um, and, and sort of opening that up, which will then hopefully continue to allow us to go towards, like I said, you know, I think, I think there's obvious um, value in say do, doing a hundred $1 million contracts opposed to one $100 million contract. There, there's no doubt about that. And we want to, bring that to life for the likes of the, like I said, a thousand, one hundred thousand dollar contracts or, you know, even more smaller ones. I think that that's what it's all about. It's about, again, just falling back to the same concept that as a content creator, the content that you deliver and the live streaming platform consumes has value and that people should be recognized for that. And that's something that we're going to do. Um, and we're looking forward to, to expanding that out to, um, to all levels. And, and to, to what Andrew was saying before, it's not just even say, you know, a hundred thousand dollar contracts or one thousand dollar contracts they can get real small uh there, there's a there's a starting point for everyone and we want to give everyone that opportunity to grow with the platform with uh enough funding to to make it viable because it, it's hard to to get started with full-time live streaming when you don't have any income at all or you're just relying on a few subs so that's what we're, we're looking to solve and we're we're working on it and i think a lot of what this kind of v2 that the paulie's been discussing will be encompassed in allowing us the ability to sort of very much automate how we do contracts, how we pay our contracts, how we sign contracts and how we bring people on board. And then we can continue to bring on, hopefully, you know, when we talk about thousands of people, uh, if not tens of thousands of people under that sort of premise of, you know, instead of just having one big signing, let's go with thousands of smaller ones. Uh, pivoting a little bit into, um, you know, talking about different streamers here. Um, we obviously live streaming in general is, uh, especially IRL live streaming is, is bound to be messy no matter what, right? Like that is just the nature of live streaming and stuff is going to happen in IRL streaming. Uh, recently we've seen kick actually take action, which is extremely rare. Uh, I would say, um, which I'm not saying as like a, as a bad thing. I think it's positive. Like we don't have to walk on eggshells when you're on kick, which is nice. Um, but we've seen kick actually issue some bans uh, in the space, which, uh, we were curious from y'all's point of view. I mean, we've seen, um, obviously, it was, we've had Heel Mike um, just yesterday. People were posting clips of, you know, Zerka uh, jumping HS. You, you know, we've seen a lot of people getting in fights, physical altercations, and actually seen bans issued, even if they're only temporary. We've seen, you know, one day, three day bans. So, what is it um, that kind of tipped the scales in those situations that made Kick? issue bans and and where is that line um with these streams that you guys are are deciding to step in and say okay now this is the time that we need to actually enforce something yeah i think obviously when it comes to moderation um you know we we want to we want to make sure that we we don't over moderate but at the same time we, we most certainly don't want to under moderate that that's extremely important too um yeah we obviously have released more defined and more up-to-date sort of community guidelines which try to encompass what we're trying to achieve as a platform more in line with what we're actually going to be fully enforcing and how we're going to be enforcing that um yeah i think we've we've been through that a little bit um and you know in those in those updated community guidelines you know one of the aspects we speak about a lot is violence uh, and that that's something that we we draw the line at most certainly there is you know violence is is not acceptable um you know no matter sort of how how you put it, it it's just it's it's something which we're not going to get behind so there has been a few bands that have been issued on that front and we will continue to extend those bands if, if it continues it's it's something that we don't want to be known for um and again, I think this is a symptom of the fact that IRL streaming is just a really complicated subject. Um, it, there's a lot of variables. There's a lot of things that can happen when you're IRL streaming. You've got far less control than, you know, say we're sitting here at our desktops right now. You know, it's quite civilized and we can control the atmosphere quite well and 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 moderate the stream in a way that's within our control. But when you're out in the IRL, <laughs> out, sorry, in real life and, and, um, and and there's just anything can happen whether it means like getting jumped by someone or you know what gets said it becomes difficult to moderate that with with the same level of consistency that you may moderate a a desktop stream so we're quickly understanding that we're learning that it's a very difficult subject to get right 
And I think that we want to continue to delve further into this um, this category. I think that this category has a lot of potential. I think people are really enjoying some of the content being produced from IRL streams. Um, but there, there needs to be an understanding of where we draw the line, where we stop um, allowing that kind of content to be made. And I think a big problem about IRL streaming is that people will definitely push the boundaries and, and subsequently see a lot of an increase in viewership. And, and that sometimes is, is really difficult for us to, to prevent. Um, so, you know, we, we, we as a platform need to make sure that we're, we're on the, you know, the, on the forefront of, of keeping that under control. And, and we're learning a lot along the way. Um, it's, it is it is most certainly difficult and, and we will continue to, to figure out exactly where that line is drawn and continue to update the guidelines in accordance with that. But it's, um, yeah, it's, you're going to definitely see more bands out there as, as people continue to test those limits. Yeah. I think train has spoke to this before people may be taking advantage of the, of the leniency of kick as a platform. And with the rise of IRL, I don't think it'd be crazy to, to say that we've seen a, a pretty big uptick, not just in IRL, but maybe some, some physical altercations uh, on the platform when you guys see all those headlines, cause it, it has become a thing where it's kind of let off with kick streamer. And then it's probably followed by something pretty crazy compared to other platforms. When you, when you see these upticks, when you see these instances, you know, behind the scenes, how are you guys reacting? Are you, are you guys trying to combat this actively? Like you said, you're finally handing out bans, but what's the thought process? Um, well, yeah, I think the public feedback is, is always a great indicator. It's a great way to kind of get a, a temperature check of, of how people feel about certain, um, aspects of this newfound IRL streaming sort of section that is developing right now. Um, it is something which, as I discussed, is very difficult to have a blanket moderation policy around, and we're going to constantly find areas in which people kind of push these limits and, you know, you end up with these crazy titles. It's, um... You know, it's, it's funny you mentioned that. Yeah, kick streamer does X, Y, Z. It's it's becoming quite a <laughs> quite a common trend that 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 you you will see. But we we don't want that to be the case forever. I think as we as we sort of position ourselves and understand where these lines are, you're going to see that popping up a bit. Um, but yeah, in the background, every time that happens, there are discussions taking place constantly. Um, we're not just sitting back and 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 doing nothing about it. We go, okay, this this seems to be causing issues. This is bad for. For, for the the brand um you know the, the trust and safety of the brand and and what we need to do to combat it so it's 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 an ongoing discussion uh constantly um and i think i think that we're going to you know hopefully continue to figure out exactly what can and, and can't be allowed but at the same time we want to be careful because i think we we have an incredibly cool category here that can exist and i think that this is a big part of what the next generation of live streaming looks like this is what people want to see so we don't want to cut the the legs off what what could be a really entertaining category for people who enjoy it uh we want to let it thrive we want to give it the best chance of succeeding but at the same time just making sure we understand exactly what the consequences are for the broader community especially i think the thing about the irl streamers that we've noticed the most is that they've caused a lot of issues for for some of our most core members of our community the gaming streamers the traditional desktop streamers have been dragged into the controversy that has been um stemmed from from irl streamers and i really feel for them because they are the backbone of this platform this platform is made up of the hundreds of smaller streamers who are well, not small small to medium-sized streamers who who just play games and just want to do their own thing and continue to stream how they have been for for the last you know how many ever years um and when these irl streamers are going around causing a bad name for the platform they're representing it's it's difficult so we're on top of that we don't want to make sure that we adapt our rules and and policy to make sure that they're protected um but at the same time make sure that we're protecting those those irl streamers who are also doing a good job um because there are some of them that are are doing a, a, a really good job and i think uh 90 of the time creating really good content um it's about making sure that that other percentage is is kind of brought down to the point whereby it can be a, you know, overall positive um, experience and, um, you know, net positive for the platform essentially. So to answer your question, yeah, we're, we're not just sitting back and, and looking at these, these, these controversies and going, Oh, that that's cool. We're, <laughs> we're having ongoing discussions. Everyone has their own opinion, even internally. Some of us, you know, butt heads and go, well, that should not be allowed. This should be allowed. And it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of politics to it. I'll tell you that. Um, but we're we're making a lot of headway. That's for sure. I think Hunter, Hunter, you mind if I 
sneak one more or you- I just have thoughts on that r- real quick. If gotcha, you don't mind. Gotcha, yeah. um, I just think it's super interesting. I mean, we've talked about, obviously we talk about everything uh, on our stream and uh, we've talked about that situation. I feel like you guys are in a really unique uh, position situation where you're trying to figure out where in the line you are, where Twitch obviously was uh, took the over moderation stance uh, that you guys are, you reference, like you don't want to over moderate, you don't want to under moderate. Um, but what we've seen on kick is, is trying to find that balance, which I have to imagine is extremely difficult for you guys of, okay, on one side of the line, you know, people might start getting concerned about safety, right? Like way back when with, with Fousey and, and at Jack's house, Jack Doherty's house, uh, we talked to Aiden's team after, um, Jake, if you remember, and they're like, yeah, like we got, we got nervous about like after the altercation started on stream that like guns might get pulled. Like people might get like their safety might get, um, you know, pushed a little bit. And that's where like, I have to imagine for you guys, you're like, man, how do we make sure like physical altercations don't go too far and people aren't taking things too far on the platform so that our streamers and community are safe. But then on the flip side of the line, because you're not over moderating, it's also, in my opinion, allowing for for good content to to naturally take place um, in a lot of situations where, like I said, people aren't walking on eggshells anymore. They're able to experiment with stuff. Um, obviously, we've talked about ice plenty of times. Me and Jake had a back and forth for a while with our chat where I was like, and people have their opinions on the prison stream. But to me, I was like, this feels like MTV jackass a little bit. You know, this feels like like MTV content back in the day. Uh, you know, it feels like people are are branching out to do things and people have criticisms of that too, right? Of like, okay, is this towing the line of as to what's safe, but people are opting into it. And so I have to imagine like people like to see it as a, as a massive black and white situation. But to me, it's extremely a, a gray area that you guys are trying to like navigate. Um, and so I don't know if there's a question in here, just more so a comment on that's got to be extremely difficult. Um, and hey, so hey, I, I can, feel for you guys. Can I, Eddie, can I pick up on this real quick? Yeah. Go for it. Is that cool? Yeah. So look, what you're describing is a complete evolution of media consumption. Uh, this goes all the way back to, you know, when War of the Worlds was a radio show and everyone thought that aliens were actually attacking Earth, right? This goes all the way back to when, you know, the first sitcom. Uh, and laugh track uh, came out and and it threw everyone off right this this goes this goes all the way back to Jerry Springer and we know that all that was orchestrated right this goes this this goes back to to soap operas right I mean this is a complete evolution of media and the thing is is that live streaming was strangled very early on before it was allowed to evolve all right um, and then you start you start taking the good and you start recognizing the bad and then you start fostering the good, right? And I think that that's a lot of the stuff that 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 Eddie's been touching on here. Um, and that's that's definitely our aim here at Kick. But at the same time, if you don't let creators create, then Big Brother would have never come around. I mean, think about when the real world came around. It's like you're going to stick all these teenagers in the same house and they're going to do what? Right. Like that was that was shocking at that time. Um, You know, I think when, you know, Discovery came out with like 16 and pregnant uh, MTV like that blew people's minds. Right. Um, My point is, is that we have to allow live streaming to do the same thing. I'm, I'm glad you brought up the prison thing with ICE because, dude, that was. That was live streaming meeting the glory days of 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 what you described in 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 Fear Factor, in Road Rules, in in all of those shows. Right now, we just we're just finding that balance. And props to Crazy Ton, who's in chat right now. I think who who went so far into that competition. Right, but but also I think in our discussions with Ice and and subsequent issues that we had with him before. Ice Poseidon totally understood the boundaries within his own show where he expressed and and, 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 and and had good judgment where it just didn't get crazy off the rails, right? But it was still very entertaining. So um, I'm not saying that there aren't learnings from that. What I'm saying is, is that every time we do something, we're going to learn a little bit more. And, and it's the same thing with this this fighting thing, right? Eddie spoke on it before you guys came on. It's not it's not going to be condoned condoned here on on kick. We understand that it happened and we're going to morph into that, man. We're going to we're, we're, we're going to take our licks, we'll learn from it and then evolve.
I think just to, to wrap that one up, I think that a lot of these categories where we are a, you know, a company which is able to take a little bit of risk, right? I think if you're a large company that that is constantly scrutinized, you you see a category like IRL streaming and what's going on there, and you go, this is too risky. We got to get out of it completely. We can't even take any chances. You know, naturally, I think it's a little bit of risk involved, but the upside is there too. There is a lot of reward in terms of high quality content that can exist, but that risk just needs to be managed and needs to be moderated. It needs to be continued to be adapted to. So I think that's a very unique situation that we find ourselves in is we can experiment with these limits and, and make these um, decisions to allow for, as Andrew said, this this new generation of kind of content to actually sort of have a chance at at at, at evolving so it's uh it's exciting times and I'm, I'm really interested to see where it goes and where um you know where 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 um where we're fully backing backing it but at the same time uh keeping an eye on exactly where it's headed you know fingers on the pulse La- last one on that situation in particular because i think we can just be open about it because like hunter said when you find yourself with ice having a prison slash what people were calling torture stream immediately you're going to have a lot of people who find it like the fear factor uh days whatever entertaining but no matter what you do no matter what you say you're gonna have the opposite side and probably the side that i was leaning on watching some of the clips i was like whoa this is crazy like how is this allowed so when it when a situation pops up like that what are the discussions between you and the team because like you said you can butt heads behind the scenes too when ice brings up this idea like, what are those discussions like? Do you guys discuss how how people are going to portray this? Are, are you reacting live to how the situation is, is unraveling as well? I'm just, I'm just curious because we don't really get the chance to ask these kind of questions because watching it live and seeing all the clips, it was a pretty crazy instance. Like, you're never going to see that on most platforms. Uh, and like you said, you can take those risks. But behind the scenes, what are you guys saying as this thing is happening? Yeah, behind the scenes throughout, let's use the, the prison stream, for example. Um, yeah, before I went live, we, we had a bit of a breakdown of, of what it was going to look like, um, you know, a bit of insight. There was a lot of impromptu stuff that came up as well, which were like, hold on a second. <laughs> we, we didn't agree to this so much. We didn't see this one coming. Um, and there were some moments where we're like, hold on, uh, how, how, do we, how do we deal with this? And, and you know, a lot of discussions happened internally. And then a lot of those discussions were kind of relayed to the team there and said, hold on, no, no, that's not on. Um, and, and that was a constant back and forth. You know, what you guys see is, is obviously the end product. Um, what happens behind the scenes is there's a whole lot of, of discussion around, is this a good look for the platform? Is this safe? Is this going to get us, hell, is this going to get us in legal trouble, right? Like that, that got, we got the lawyers going on about stuff. Like there's everyone involved. You know, you've got compliance, you've got trust and safety, you've got marketing who are loving it but then you've got all these other departments which hate it, right? So it's always that kind of back and forth internally. Um, you know, internally, we've, we, we've got people who love that content. We've got people who hate that content. Um, so it's a, there's a lot of, there's there's almost like a level of moderation that needs to take place inside of Kick to, to uh, sometimes as well, because everyone wants to voice their, their own opinion and, and rightfully so. Um, but I think, I think it, it really all just comes back to, trying to understand where we, we need to draw that line for the sake of creating content. Um, because yeah, the further you push that line, the, the more incredible the content's going to get, but the more the risks are going to increase. Um, so our discussions are about, okay, how much risk are we willing to take on board and where do we draw the line? And, and that's, that's kind of what it all comes down to at the end of the day. Um, and yeah, that, that prison stream, I think from a learnings perspective was probably one of the the best examples because we did have control to be able to say okay let's pull this one back let's 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 put an end to to this certain sort of um arc that it's taking on board um and i think the same can be applied to kind of a lot of irl content in terms of people that we have communications with and how we can continue to set standards Bouncing back real quick, I uh, saw someone in the chat have this question, thought it was interesting. Thinking back to the early days of Kick, I think like bands were pretty much non-existent. Like you guys were just growing, a lot of headlines, uh, a lot of controversy. I-, I would say bands weren't really present. In recent times, we- we've had bands start to be issued. I think most recently, you guys maybe spoke about it this morning, an indefinite suspension maybe being handed out. So the progression is certainly there of like, okay, we're finding the line of what kick has to ride. Do you guys think there will ever be a permanently banned streamer on kick? Um, Paul probably has more numbers around this, but we definitely have a lot of permanently banned streamers. We got thousands. Um, okay, I but mean, yeah. public facing. 
Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I think I think that, that, that it's 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 gonna happen. Uh, and I, I think that to be fair, there's a lot of view people with between a hundred to sort of a thousand viewers that have been permanently banned for crossing the line too many times. Um, we really emphasize how we enforce our TOS, and I think that's a really important part. Andrew kind of touched on it before before you guys joined the call around like. You know, a lot of platforms will just ban people and say you broke TOS and and da da da. We're not going to give you much more reasoning. We try to talk to people a bit more, voice our concerns, and and try to speak with them to hopefully remedy the situation. I like to think at the end of the day, most of the time, people aren't breaking TOS because they disrespect the platform or they disrespect the rules. It's sometimes because they don't really know exactly why that exists, for what reason, and and how they're actually breaching it. Um, so a lot of these discussions are helping. I think we have managed to turn a lot of streams around. I think a lot of people who, who would have maybe received, say, a permanent ban elsewhere, we've actually spoken with them and, and managed to figure out exactly you know where that situation was derived from and 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 keep them on the platform whilst also helping them to to stick within our boundaries so you know hopefully we we don't have to issue too many permanent suspensions that's i think at that point a a failure of communication but if people do continue to push that line too many times then of course it's it's inevitable that we we can't allow that and i think um I think I think that that we're, we're there's a few people that that might be pretty close to that line. Um, I'm hoping not, it, but it, it's inevitable, of course. Um, sometimes the only way you can truly get people to listen is by 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 removing them, and and that's just uh, no different to the real world when it comes to enforcing the laws, right? And as much as we don't want to have to enforce that that level of of scrutiny upon people, we're going to have to eventually if they don't want to comply with with very basic. Um, you know, terms of service and, and guidelines. But, you know, our promise to the community is that we're going to work with you before we go and dish out those bans. I think that's most important. We're going to speak with you. We're going to have that conversation, whether it's an email, whether it's a, um, you know, clear understanding of, of where you're going wrong and make sure that we hopefully don't have to get to the point where where a permanent ban is issued. So that that's what we want to try to differentiate ourselves from. Um, we don't want to be known as a place that never bans people, but we want to be known as a place that treats people fairly. Maybe just a couple more. Jake, I want to respect your guys' time. Uh, yep, I know you yep. are waiting. Almost there for sure. Uh, you want to follow up? You want me to roll with one? I got, I'll just do like one last one if you got some thoughts. Uh, again, we appreciate y'all's time. Eddie, we have more viewers than you right now, but it's because of an issue you guys have spoke about before. And I know you guys talked about it today as well. My last question, it's been, and I know you guys, sorry for making you reiterate again. Um, but the view body issue here on kick is something very prevalent. People talk about it's a big concern for people. If you don't mind just TLDR in the ways you guys plan on combating that to end this year, but also throughout 2024. Yeah. The view budding one's been something where we're learning a lot about constantly. And it's, uh, it's, it's a tricky, it's a tricky one. The, the more, the moment we go, oh, we, we figured out how to kind of combat this variation of view bodying. There's another way of getting around that. And it's, 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 the same reason that that botting exists on all social media platforms still right um it doesn't matter whether it's botting likes botting followers botting anything it, it's it's available and it's out there and it still exists to this day i think it's about making sure that you you keep it as difficult as possible and i think that we we are struggling at times to to stay on top of that but it's front and center you know view manipulation is something which really deteriorates the overall experience of the platform i think a lot of people want to be able to find the best streamers um through sorting through view count um through sorting through you know key metrics to, to understand who they want to to go ahead and, and view it and when when that's disrupted with with people intentionally or in your case unintentionally um being caught up in 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 this manipulation it, it really does hinder the overall platform so it's something we're continue continuing the work on um Paul probably has a bit more understanding around that. The way we're going to handle view counts is, is going to definitely change when we release this this V2. A big part about what we want to push forward, and I discussed this a bit with you guys, is is opening up transparency around viewership as well. I think that's something which can be really, really powerful in allowing creators the ability to kind of say, okay, my viewers are, you know, 80% on residential IPs versus 20% on VPNs and the location they're based in. Because view, view manipulation is obvious. That's the bottom line of it, right? We can see as a platform, um, you know, who's viewbotting. It, it's it, it's day and night. It, it's it's so easy to recognize 
um, the IPs that are connecting, the location they're from. There's so many different metrics you can use. Um, and we want to open up that transparency to everyone who wants to opt into it, you know, without sort of getting in the way of privacy. We want to say, okay, hold on a second. You want to prove you're not view button, go ahead, turn on this one setting and your viewers will be able to kind of ascertain that assumption themselves the same way we're so easily able to ascertain that assumption. Another factor that we want to do, you know, go down is, is making sure the discoverability is removed from people who are intentionally abusing viewer manipulation. Um, you know, I've kind of mentioned this before, but the moment someone intentionally, and we can also tell whether it's intentional or unintentional, uh, that there's ways to go about it, intentionally engages in viewer manipulation, they really are closing a lot of doors on themselves. Um, you know, some simple stuff like entering the creator incentive program or simple stuff like becoming featured on the homepage and all that kind of stuff, it suddenly closes those doors. You know, you have a black mark against your name as, as being a viewer manipulator and, and that's going to hinder your growth. Obviously, it might put you a little bit higher up in the directory when someone views a, uh, a, a section, but down the line, it's going to be, you know, it, it's kind of one step forward, two steps backwards kind of situation. And we want to continue to to show people that, wait a second, this doesn't work. <laughs> and I think that as we continue to, to remove discoverability, remove those options from people doing it, they're, they're going to realize, wait, it, it makes no sense. Um, but on, on the flip side, again, that there's people who are also unintentionally being targeted. So that's something from a product perspective, from a technical perspective, we need to continue to work on. It's just once we kind of, it's kind of like playing whack-a-mole, you know, you solve one problem and before you know it, they kind of back up with a new solution. Uh, it is it is complicated. And I think that's one area that we we have underestimated how persistent these people are. Um, so, you know, shout out to those people that are still, you know, keeping us up at night through causing the problems with all these, these, uh, these, these sort of botting um, attacks. But... Um, you know, we, we, we completely recognize and we're not sleeping on, on the fact that, that we need to, to make sure that the platform remains ultimately fair and, and that this doesn't hinder people's enjoyment. So we're, um, yeah, we, we recognize that we're working on it. We, um, I think, I think that we're going to be able to pull it off and do it better than, than other platforms have done. Because I think, you know, people look at kick and they, they say, the same way you mentioned that it's a problem. I think it's only more obvious on kick because it is a smaller platform. You know, people who do engage in this behavior stand out a lot more because the pond is smaller, but heck it's, it's prevalent everywhere. And I think we can do a better job at containing view botting down the line. I think we're, we're already coming up with ideas and potential solutions to, you know, combat it more successfully than other platforms, but it certainly is, uh, an area of the business that we underestimated uh, in terms of of complexities. So it'll be uh, it'd be a bit of a journey, but yeah, it's uh, a work in progress. Um, then on my end, um, as far as uh, obviously we just saw RTZ uh, get signed recently, which congr congratulations on that. Um, as far as esports pros personalities, there's a lot that are in content creation these days. Are there any you guys have? have had your eyes on recently or or people that you're like maybe you haven't even talked to you're like man we would love to sign or talk to these people uh in the esports and, and gaming world um oh in terms of the esports world um yeah i i think i think we're we're, we're still very much open to to pretty much um, anyone who has that, that larger viewership, we just need to make sure that, that it, it's viable for us. Um, and it does have an audience, which is going to stick. We kind of spoke about this before about how, you know, certain creators have certain followings, which suit a, a, a platform switch better than others. Right. And I think with esports, unfortunately, it's a bit more difficult to find those creators who have that same kind of following because they're very game specific. They're very, um, you know, specific to, to even the platform because they, they follow the eSport as a whole, right? And they, they like being in a place where they can find all the other creators. So it is a little bit more trickier with the, it isn't like the sort of the, 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 the variety content creators that, you know, you can instantly recognize these people have incredibly um, sort of loyal and, um, a, you know, audience which is going to follow them anywhere essentially. So, so it's a bit more difficult to say that the specific people we're looking towards, but uh, again, back to the whole concept of us, uh, how we're going to enter esports and attempt to make sort of kick more synonymous with esports uh, down the line. We we do have a bit of a strategy in place, and that definitely starts with bringing over individual creators and making them feel at home, and and then working towards 
esports in general. But um, you know, in terms of people we're looking to sign still, um, I we're still we're still hoping to hear from Pokimane. She still hasn't reached out yet, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep our ears up. That's gonna be uh, that's gonna be the day when 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 we when she comes over. I'm, I'm hoping for it. Okay, the final one uh, on my end that just branches off of that one um, is uh, you said you're you know you're talking to a lot of people, which means you're obviously talking to people with different scenes. Uh, we've got Dota over here, seen RuneScape streamers even. Um, so I'm sure you guys have talked to people um, on you know the League of Legends uh, and Valorant side of things, uh, as well as people who who you've probably talked to that have run into um, more barricades i would say i mean we've even talked to some brands some game devs and studios who still have the reservations about kick like still to this day um are still concerned about it and there's different devs who are there's different companies different brands what on you all side um it's kind of two-pronged i guess sorry uh have you guys run into a lot of issues with that in conversations with people of like uh studios or brands blocking streamers from working with you uh, and then if so uh, you know what have you guys been doing to help maybe remedy that or reassure brands and game devs and studios um that hey you guys should work with us yeah that's honestly a really really great question it's been something that we've found difficulty with from the very beginning right i like to think that um you know from our perspective when when creators are looking to move over to a new platform that they, they kind of need to understand all right you know what is this going to how is this going to affect me in terms of of my existing sponsorships and my existing viewership and my existing sort of grassroots right so um you know we like to call that kind of the delta between kick and and other platforms in terms of net ability to earn revenue and it does affect that heavily um because a lot of sponsorships aren't on the table with kick but i'll tell you what the good news is that is changing very quickly. I think a lot of brands which wouldn't even consider, you know, a kick viewership as being valuable are changing their mind very quickly. And you see the rise of, of so many people getting sponsorships or, or receiving these opportunities, um, you know, to, to, to work alongside brands on the basis of them having a large kick following, you know, changing day by day. So many more brands are definitely recognizing it. I think there are a few brands which are a little bit more hesitant um, some big names, especially in the development sort of category that you mentioned before. We've found that combating that has has been really successful through, um, you know, one of our largest teams internally now is our trust and safety team. It's something we've we've been building out a lot these, these last six months. Uh, trust and safety is incredibly important to us. And, um, you know, sending those teams in there to have those discussions to understand, okay, what is it you, 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 you know, you don't like about kick at the moment? What is it that we need to prove to you? Um, and how can we see eye to eye? So, so working alongside the brands and, and reassuring them that, that, you know, we have their best interest in mind has been really, really successful. Um, and I think we're making a lot of headway with brands we thought would never, ever, you know, see eye to eye with. Um, so that, that's really important because that really does affect individual streamers, like the content creators who, who are looking to, you know, receive a certain type of sponsorship or, or, or um, benefits for working with certain brands. They couldn't do that on kick with many um, of their existing partnerships, even six months ago. And that, that has changed a lot and, and is continuing to expand in terms of, of who sort of looks at, at kick as a, a potential platform. But with that said, we have a hell of a long way to go. Um, it's difficult being the new kid on the block. It's difficult being at the center of a lot of controversy. It's difficult having a lot of learning curves that have been derived from, as you mentioned before, you know, issues with, with view botting or issues with, with, with moderation or issues with everything that we're going through. But, um, you know, that's the thing, right? We're, we're just constantly learning. We're constantly making headway in the right direction on all these fronts. And, and naturally this subject of, of, um, you know, different brands looking at kick as a reputable partner for themselves to, to work alongside is, is, is changing that landscape. So, um, I, yeah, for me personally, this is such an important subject because I'm constantly dealing with that kind of Delta I discussed with you before and, and trying to close that up as much as possible is so important. Um, but I think, I think there's, there's, there's truly a way forward. And I think that the results for these creators, for these, um, these different IPs and brands will be delivered through the fact that they will, you know, look at kick and, and they will get the results when they work with creators and that they'll set the path forward. So, um, yeah, incredibly important subject and something we recognize. And, uh, I personally like to think making a lot of positive headway on.
think we agree. We've seen a lot of change uh, on that end too, just in conversations with with people or, or brands or devs in the back end. Um, I yeah, we agree with that. We've seen a lot of people respect Kick uh, in a wildly different way um, versus, like you said, six months ago. People now are like, wait a second, like maybe we should do like do stuff now. So I have to imagine the back end. Yeah, it's a whole different world. Just just to double down on specific examples, guys, like Elgato since our phase one and phase two uh, uh, packages for unboxings, right? That, 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 that doesn't just happen. Um, you know, uh, Gamer Advantage is going to be start working with, uh, with phase one, two, and, and, and three, all right? Uh, the, the, the Gamer Eyewear, obviously DreamHack um, is, is welcoming with us with open, open arms. Those guys are not anything to sneeze at. They, they are, uh, a highly respectable uh, organization that, that are making moves. Um, uh, and there are also IPs that we've all talked to because they want to kick the tires on kick. We've explained our vision and where we're going. And I can say with a hundred percent, even, even the big guys that you think would never touch us with a 10 foot pole. I think that they're just waiting for the tide to continue to turn. And the more that it turns day by day, we get more and more phone calls and in a positive nature saying, Hey, we're ready to jump in with two feet because um, what you guys are doing is, um, is good for the industry. Awesome. Uh, I think that's all maybe from our and Jake. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. The last one we'll wrap it and let's send you guys on this one. This could come from Polly or anyone and it could be as quick as possible. We just got to ask when it comes to a, a 20 late 2023 or 2024 roadmap of things people can expect or things you guys are excited to announce. I know you can't disclose everything, it can be month by month or quarter by quarter. Could you guys give us an expectation of what you know you guys maybe see coming down the pipeline for 2024 that people can get excited about? Yeah, I can go for that one. I mean, I met, I mentioned a bunch of things earlier uh, in terms of what we expect in, towards the end of 2023. 2024, you can expect you know Q1 definitely kick something that we're really taking the time to do right. Uh, I think that's fundamentally going to change the way people interact in terms of like monetarily on the platform. Um, just a ton of updates in terms of like console, uh, applications and just being able to view kick from just different experiences altogether, uh, being able to stream directly from the mobile application, which is something that we've been working on that, so you don't have to use third-party applications. Um, and then, yeah, just a bunch of the stuff I mentioned earlier is coming sooner than, than 2024. So it's, the future is really bright for us. Um. And we're trying to think outside of the box. I think I want to make that really clear is that we're not trying to just match what other people are doing. We're trying to, to come up with completely new additions and features to what, what we can bring to live streaming. Awesome. Cool. I think that's all we got, guys. Uh, thank you so yeah. much for your time. I mean, I know we went longer um, than originally planned, and I know we were an hour late. So <laughs> uh, we appreciate your time, definitely. I think you're, I think you you're actually not, technically you right on time. time. Yeah, the time the time was not our side. We we uh we 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 missed the daylight savings, so apologies on that front. <laughs> no, we we do appreciate all y'all's time, and we hope to do this again in the future. But seriously, thank you guys. We know we, we keep you guys long, uh, but we do we we do appreciate it. Hey, uh, r r real quick before I let Eddie with the, the the last thought, like you know, chat, like if you have not checked out Jake and Hunter and what they're doing on the gamer update, it's really impressive to watch these guys watch. I. I personally think it's an evolution in journalism and watching these guys track down breaking news in real time. And then Jake going on and doing his YouTube report and, 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 and Hunter feeding him information in real time. And then chat coming in with links and saying, Hey, so-and-so is talking shit. You know, listen, phase rain probably gave you guys three weeks of content, uh, live content in real time. And it was amazing for you to wa watch you go around, Found from each phase member and watching them weigh in on opinions. Um, I think you guys are pioneering something different in journalism. So chat, if you haven't watched these guys do their thing, it's amazing the process that happens when they try to encompass everything in a tweet. Uh, there's a, definitely a lot more nuance that you can catch them do um, on their, on their live stream. We appreciate that, dude. Uh, definitely. You know, we're trying our best out here and, uh, like you said, it's a, it's a whole new frontier. Uh, so we appreciate it. And this is part of it, right? Like, I think this is part of the new quote unquote, like media frontier where we like in no world five years ago would, 
would, you know, people of y'all stature in a company in live streaming be talking to us, right? And so I think it's all part of it. Um, and we're stoked to be on kick doing it right now. So uh, thank you guys again. Oh yeah, awesome. No, thank you so much guys for your time. We, um, you know, obviously really appreciate the questions. I think it shines a lot of light on, on a lot of the difficult questions, which sometimes don't get asked as well. So, um, you know, it's really good and it's refreshing to, um, to be able to speak about everything. And I think we'll, we'll obviously probably do this again soon, I hope. And, uh, you know, hopefully a lot of what we discussed about, I think in our first talk, I kept mentioning, you know, words are words, but actions will, will kind of speak louder. And I, you know, I continue the hope that every time we speak, we'll, we'll kind of go, hold on a second. We, we talked about that last time and it is getting a bit better. Or, and, you know, a lot of comes, a lot of it comes to life, right? That's, uh, that's what this is all about. So, um, I think it also helps hold us all accountable. I think a lot of what gets answered here, it's on the record, it's, uh, it's out public facing. And I think, um, it helps us as a platform understand what we have to deliver and make sure that everyone understands where, uh, where we sit on certain situations. So, um, you know, really appreciate you guys coming on and looking forward to the next one.